In this video, I'm going to create a blog detail page for my site. And just like in the last video when we created the listing page, I've got an HTML page. I've already designed how I'd like my blog to look. And so I'm now going to sort of put all the fu perch functions in so that we can get it working with perch and with our dynamic content. So I've saved that page. I've saved it as post.php into my blog folder. And I've already added the perch runtime here so we can start to use perch. So if we have a look at our listing page and click on any of these, it will now load up our post.php page in the browser. And you can see here that there's this query string on the end. Now at the moment, this is just the hard-coded content on that page. We've not added any dynamic content yet. But you can see we've got a query string and it says s equals and then we've got this. This is the blog slug. This identifies the actual post. Now in a later video, I'll show you how to rewrite your URLs to make these more friendly so we don't have this query string. But whether you've got rewritten URLs or whether you're using um, a query string like this, as far as the web server is concerned, you're using a query string. So we've got s equals and then the slug. Now that's important. So if we now go back to our code, what we want to do is we want to get that value, the value of s. We need to have that because that's going to identify our post. Because when we load this page for each individual post, we need to look and see well, which post is this, which post have we clicked on, and then load that content into this page. So that's all we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that value off the query string. Now I need to do that inside PHP, so let's use some PHP tags to do it. And I'm going to create a PHP variable, and it's called post slug. Now we need to get that value of s. Now perch has a nice little function that will help you do this, and it's called perch get, and it's a PHP function, so we have those brackets. And we want to get the value of s. So perch get will get stuff off the query string, uh, whichever value you pass in. So we've said we want to have s. We want the value of s off the query string. And that will get us our blog slug and store it in this variable here. So we can use this now on the page. So if we go and have a quick look at the docs again, where we've been looking for functions. Now if we look up here, we can see we've got a function here called perch blog post. Display a single post with perch blog post. That sounds ideal. So you can either pass in the ID of a post or the unique post slug. And that's what we've got. We've got that post slug. So that's great. So let's just take that. Now you can see here that's using the perch get function right inside the function there, which you can do rather than write it to a variable. Because we're going to use it in a few different places, I wrote it out to a variable. So now we need to go down and find where the post is displayed. Ah, here it is. So let's take out the hard-coded post. And then we're going to post this in. So that's our function. I'm going to replace this with my PHP variable. So that's going to be post slug. So we've now got a PHP function here, perch blog post, and we're passing in the value of post slug. Ah, and here's the new content. Now it doesn't look quite like it did before. Again, we've not changed our templates yet, but you can see we've got this post. Now if we go back, and this one's called Learning to Fly, let's click on that. And you can see we've now got Learning to Fly showing up. So that's pretty cool. We've now got some dynamic content coming out into that page. And it doesn't matter how many blog posts you've got, you'll click through and you'll be able to load your content. Now, there's a few other places, and the reason I wrote that value of the query string to a variable is that I'm going to use it in a few other places uh, as we build up our site. So let's go back to the code. Now one thing you might want to do is add 
the title of your blog post into the title element of the page. That's good for SEO, isn't it, to be able to show what the actual unique title is for the page. So we can do that with another function. Now, there's a function called Perch Blog Post Field, which you can use to pick out a field from your template. So let's find that one. Perch Blog Post Field. Output a single field such as the title. That sounds exactly what we'd like to have. So we can grab that. And see, we'll pop this here in the title. And once again, I'm going to use my variable that I've created. And you can see that I'm passing in that. So that's the post that I want to retrieve. And I'm asking for the post title field. Now, this is a field that's in my template. So you need to make sure when using this that you're asking for a field that exists in the template or it's not going to work. Other things you might want to do, uh, we've got some information that appears about um, the categories and the tags that our post is in. So you can see we've got this here, we've got categories and we've got tags. And once again, we've got some handy functions you can use to, to get that information. So under categories there, I'm going to remove all the uh, information, including the heading. And we can use perch, blog, post, categories. Now this is different to perch, blog, categories, which output all of the categories used in the blog. This is the one for the specific post, which is why it's perch, blog, post. And once again, we can add our post slug in here. And then we've got tags, which works in exactly the same way, except instead of asking for perch, blog, post, categories, we will have perch blog post tags. So once we've done that, then we go back to our page and scroll down and you can see we've got the categories and the tags showing up for this particular post. Uh, if we go back The leaving the nest one. You can see here that the title is showing up and if we scroll down we've got the tags and categories for that particular post. So we're starting to build up this blog here and we've got some comments down here as well. Now the blog app uses comments. You can have comment form, you can have a comment listing. Once again you've got some handy functions just to pull that out onto the page. So here's our comments. First thing we've got is a comments listing. So it's probably not surprising to you now that what we need to do is remove the comments that we've got here. And we're going to add a function that will pull in our comments. Uh, this time we're going to use perch blog post comments. This is the comments for this particular post. And once again, we pass in the post slug. You can also pass in an array as the second argument here. And that's the same for an awful lot of these functions that you see. You can pass in extra options as an array. So just to sort of see how that works, let's say we only want to show 10 of the comments that are available. So here we'd say count 10. So that would give us 10 comments. And if you go to the documentation, you can see all the different things that you can add there. And then we've got this comment form. So we can remove the form. Put blog post, comment form so that we know which post we are adding a comment to. Again, we need to pass in the post slug. So any comments that are added will be attached to this particular post.
and you can see we've now got a comment form showing up. So that's the basics of creating our page. As I say, it looks a bit different from our test page for our HTML because we haven't updated the templates yet to get the markup that we want into the blog. However, we'll be doing that in a later video.